So let's move on to part 2. For part 2, we are going to cover system sticking principles and dimension. So let's start with system sticking principles. We learn that we live in an environment which is actually a system. So basically, we live and function within the system. But we might not realize it, we are actually influenced by the system in terms of our daily activities, our daily things that we do. And not only that, the systems on the other hand are also being influenced by us. So based on this, there are four items in system sticking principles. The first one is the big picture. The second one is long term, short term. The third one is dynamic, complex and interdependent. And the fourth principle is measurable versus non-measurable data. So the first principle is the big picture. So what does big picture mean? So the big picture basically represents the whole thing in all the holistic views. So in order for uh, you to find or you to uh, come up with the solution for a certain problem, you need to widen your focus to include the bigger system. So by this, more effective solution can be discovered. So let's look at the example for the big picture. Right, so let's say we have this one company who are selling um, the water filter. So we have this group of customers who are very disappointed in the uh, service of the, the company. So they say that they are service delay. Right, so when we say the service delay, so of course we are focusing on the customer service department. So what will be the solution? So we will force the service technician and of course the service order taking system. Okay, they need to do their work. Uh, faster than uh, their usual speed, right? So that they can uh, serve these people. However, when we look into the big picture, the problem didn't come from the customer service department, but comes from the sales group. So they, these people are trying to boost their sales by saying that there are free installation service. So there will be a lot of customer who uh, bought uh, their product. Okay, however, this information didn't uh, get to be communicated to this customer service department. So when they don't have uh, this information, so they don't have the opportunity in order for them to add more um, uh, to add more stuff uh, into their department. So when they have no time to add more stuff into their department, so that's why there are service delays here. So what? So what can we do when we have a um, problem or situation? So you cannot simply jump into a solution or conclusion, but you need to look through the bigger picture to identify the root cause of the problem. So the second principle is long term, short term. So the idea of uh, system thinking is that you need to find the balance between short term and long term, which we call as the term perspective. So behavior which leads to short term success can actually hurt the long term success. Okay, for example. Okay, so what does this mean do? So they try to sell as much as possible. Okay, in order for them to get the commission and also profit. So let's say we have this one salesman who are trying to uh, sell the skin whitening product. Okay, so he claims that the product can make the skin whiter within four days of usage. So this the, the, the potential customer listen to it and they become attracted to the product. So they bought them. And these people uh, uh, will also recommend the product to their friends. Okay, because it, let's say it is very cheap but uh, it is being, it is said that um, the, the product is so efficient. So we can see in a short period of time, a lot of items were sold. They managed to boost the sale and gain a lot of profit. Okay. However, because the salesman lies about the product in order to boost the sale, so we can look at the pattern in a long term period. Right. So people would not trust. The salesman again, which in turn will drop the sales. Okay, so that uh, what will happen if um, the, the salesmen are trying to achieve success for a uh, short period of time. 
to avoid the long-term situation. The third principle is value, complex, and interdependent. So it means that any organizational structure will evolve system within many other systems. So they are very dynamic, very complex, and very independent in nature. So in order to make sense of such complexity, humans tend to oversimplify and make decisions based on those oversimplifications. Right? So that's, that's the nature of human. That's what humans do. So systems thinking reminds us that once we simplify things, it is, ve uh, it is actually important for us to zoom back out and take into account the whole picture before making any decision. So we need to be aware of the system's relationship. The fourth principle is measurable versus non-measurable data. So there are plenty of tangible data metrics in the workplace and also in the environment. But what do we do with all the intangible information? So because we have both, right? So we account for it also, which is the intangible information, and allow it to influence our understanding alongside the tangible factors or tangible data that we have because both are important. So what are the example of measurable versus unmeasurable data? So the measurable data, for example, we have sales figure, so we have the cost. What about the non-measurable data? We have the stock model, and we also have the customer attitude and a lot more other non-measurable data that are available. Right, so let's say a company is trying to boost the sales figure and they plan to do a certain action or activity, they need to identify also in terms of their stock. What can um, uh, the, the action that they do to boost the sales figure will have on their staff model? Right? So they need to look into both um, data that they have. Let's move on to the four systems thinking dimension. So what is dynamical dimension? It is thinking in dynamical capacity, or we call it as beyond snapshot thinking. So what is beyond snapshot thinking? We try to recognize patterns over time okay, in terms of the oscillations, in terms of the feedback loops, in terms of the delay. And we also foreseeing future development. What will happen in the future in five years' time, in ten years' time? So systems have a certain behavior over time. The typical features of a system would be the time delays and also um, oscillations. So one example is try to adjust um, the aircon temperature. So it will uh, take a certain amount of time uh, to reach the desired temperature that you want. right? So this is because of the, uh, the time dimension uh, that exists, which is the time delay. So apart uh, uh, from recognizing the pattern in dynamical, the dynamical dimension, so dynamic thinking also means to foresee the future development. So it is not sufficient if you just look into the past development because you need to bring the system forward. So in the practical steering of the system, you need to foresee or forecast any possible things that you can do in the future. So how we do we do that? Normally we use the simulation models. So it is very helpful. Uh, so in order for uh, people to foresee the future developments that they can um, implement in, uh, in their system. So the second dimension is model-based dimension. So what is model-based dimension? It is basically thinking in models or awareness of system. So we have the model or the assumption of the reality that we can use so we can only think according to our picture and views of the world which are necessarily models of the world itself so we have two types of models that we can use the first one is the qualitative models we include the verbal description the cause and loop and the second one we have quantitative models for example stock and flow and also equations and a lot more and so thinking in models require us to construct to validate, we need to develop models which represent the reality for us to understand the current problems or the current situation. One example of um, the verbal description that we have 
is for example a year 10 student wants to improve himself or herself all around may spend years of her time energy and money so on study social work and entertainment he or she would then obtain experience knowledge and satisfaction based on this verbal description we can do a model from it so the model that can describe the student the first one we have the controls okay which we call as a so what would be the controls the controls are time energy and money right and then we have object so what will be the object in this statement study social work and entertainment right and then we have the performance so what will be the performance experience knowledge and satisfaction okay so if you uh, put more time in study Okay, so you will gain, gain more experience but then what will happen to your um, uh, energy, social work and knowledge, money, entertainment and satisfaction so this is one of the example um, of the verbal example that we have so the third dimension is feedback or feedback dimension so in this dimension we need to think in loops and also network so thinking in loops and network could introduce the interrelated structures will have a direct effect of the feedback loops and also network of interrelations so we also have the one-way cause effect so one-way cause effect is called as functional or linear thinking so functional or linear thinking is very different with interrelated thinking so interrelated thinking is thinking in um, interrelated so system, uh, and also the systematic structure so interrelated thinking would uh, produce uh, the direct effect and also the indirect effect so these two would uh, eventually lead to the feedback loops so the first part of feedback of the forward dimension is the feedback so feedback is seen as an influence from output back to input so we have two basic feedbacks the first one is reinforcing feedback which changes in the whole system is feedback to amplify the original change for example like praising a student for good result so what happened if we praise the student so of course it will increase the motivation and in turn the student will put more effort into the study and get a better result right so that is the reinforcing feedback okay um, the second one we have is balancing feedback Changes in the whole system is feedback to oppose the original change and so dampen the effect. For example, like criticizing a child for bad behavior. Okay, so what will happen if you criticize the child for their bad behavior? So they will try to um, behave themselves and show a good attitude, right? So that they will not be criticized with their bad behavior. second one is um, fit forward so fit forward uh, comes from our ability to anticipate or to predict the future so we anticipate fit forward right from prediction or anticipation which drives the system away from the predicted state for example when you expect to fall you often um, do so because your mind has said that you are going to fall so that's what will happen uh, another example is when you expect to succeed your energy and optimism will help you and you likely to succeed if you try to uh, focus on a certain thing and you you think that you may uh, have a uh, um, opportunity or success in a certain area so it should driving uh, drive your energy and also optimism so that is what uh, we uh, what we have in fit forward dimension and the fourth dimension is the pragmatical dimension or the practice so what uh, we have in pragmatical dimension so we try to see that uh, we can do or we can practice um, the, the certain thing or this, uh, the, the certain solution in a certain area so we look into the steering of the system to find the leverage point or we look into the counterintuitive behavior we look also into the proper intensity and the timing of action in the pragmatical dimension whether this can be practiced or not in the real situation so we look into the right action at the right time in the right place that's what people want to find and the ability uh, for practical system management and also the system control 
so this is basically on how we practice it in um, our real life systems thinking is always also a pragmatic component so we focus on the practice it deals not just with contemplating about the system it is also interested in system oriented action so one of the fundamental questions of practical systems management is which of the system's components are subject to direct change. So in social systems, it is often impossible to change the behaviours of others directly. Okay, one can only change one's own behaviour. If you have been using a certain um, method for a certain period of time, it might be uh, hard for the people to change the way they work. Okay, in an in in economic system, the producer usually has no direct control over the market because the marketing activities are usually the actions of the supplier side in order to induce the desired reaction on the demand side. So, in pragmatical dimension, in systems thinking, we try to find what, uh, what or which parts of the components that are um, uh, direct to uh, uh, subject to the direct change or can be changed in terms of the practice.